Welcome to ADP Training, YouTube's automotive technology channel. In this channel, you'll learn all kinds of auto repair secrets, how your automobile works, and how to diagnose it. Welcome to another video. In today's video, we are going to analyze uh, the ABS uh, analog wheel speed sensor. Now, uh, on screen now, you can see you can see this is the uh, uh, the oscilloscope, the eight-channel scope that we have. Uh, when we open the screen, we're going to go into the uh, vehicle diagnostics, and we're going to go into the sensor. Okay, we have another video that explains the navigation of the of the software. Um, so, uh, and then the as you can see, the third video. Uh, it's the ABS analog speed sensor. Okay, so these are pre-programmed uh, signals uh, that the scope has. Uh, and as you can see, the, the upper two waveforms are the, um, the analog um, wheel speed sensor signal. It is a sine wave, okay? Uh, we're going to explain uh, what a sine wave is uh, uh, shortly. In the event that the magnetic signal amplitude is too low or under 2 volts peak to peak, then check for proper WSS to reluctor air gap. This air gap is directly responsible for the amplitude of the magnetic wheel speed sensor, which is always a two wire component. Now, uh, going back to the uh, ABS analog speed sensor, uh, you have to, the, so what you're seeing on screen right now is, is two uh, sample waveforms uh, in blue and in yellow. So this is the upper one and the, uh, the, the first and the second one. These are sample waveforms. This is not a capture from the scope, okay? Just uh, so, so that you don't get confused. Now, uh, then the bottom two lines uh, is the actual scope uh, measuring right now, okay? And we're going to inject a signal that we have. We have a sensor simulator, and we're going to inject a signal. So let's see what it looks like. All right. So this, these are the signal at 1.5K. Actually, let's go 20, 20 hertz. So this is 20 hertz. We're going to lower the, um, the voltage. to about one volt peak to peak to peak. Let's go a little higher, two volts peak to peak. Five volts peak to peak, okay? Uh, we're gonna do the same. Let's go back down, down to two volts peak to peak. This, this, this seems to be good enough uh, for the uh, our explanation here. Now we're gonna raise the, the, the voltage, I mean the, the, uh, the frequency of, of the uh, uh, wheel speed sensor to 1.5k so as if you know uh, and then we're gonna play around with it with the waveform here with the uh, with the time base so that we can actually see the whole signal there you go now what you're seeing on screen the bottom one is an actual signal being injected on the oscilloscope uh, we don't have a uh, a car, you know, that we're, good, we're testing, you know, we're using a signal injection, uh, a signal generator, okay? And this is what it looks like. Now, uh, as you saw before on, on our sample video, uh, what you're looking for are spikes, okay? Uh, in, and a spike will look something like this. See if we can, if we can simulate a spike. So, so these are spikes, see? This is when the signal is, is corrupted. It looks like that, okay? If you see that, this is a bad signal, okay? You don't want to see that. The WSS is attached to the suspension spindle and directly senses the turning reluctor wheel. The toothed wheel or reluctor in a way and uses a voltage signal on the magnetic wheel speed sensor. If the wheel speed sensor is a Hall effect unit, then the reluctor triggers the base of the internal transistor and generates the square wave. All right, and basically, it, once you see that, then there's either a problem with the sensor itself, or a problem with the um, 
with a reluctor. Sometimes it's corroded, it's full of garbage in there, and it's pretty much, you know, uh, out of commission, you know. This signal will definitely generate a code, or it would set your, your ABS uh, into ABA, you know, into actuation mode, you know. Uh, if it doesn't set a code and it, and it goes into limping mode, okay. Now, normally, the signal should be clean like this. And the, the, and the, the, the waveform should do this. So it should change. As you can see, we're increasing and decreasing the frequency. Uh, this is the same as if the car was, was uh, accelerating. Okay? This is what you would see. So uh, it's, a, it's a very simple explanation. Uh, it's, it's straightforward. Now we're going to see we're going to do see what it looks like on channel on channel one. This the, uh, actually that was channel one, channel two, and the channel is over here. Uh, and by the way, this is this little yellow uh, triangle here. It's the zero line. Okay, so the zero line you can go up and down. You can even inter uh, superimpose it, you know, on the actual sample signal uh, if you want to compare it, like very really really close. Uh, so let's go to channel two. And that's what it looks like. Now, channel two had a, had a different um, over here. So we have to switch to channel two. Let's turn off channel one. And that way we can reference that on the scope here and lower the, uh, the voltage, which is what we were doing before. Okay. So this is five volts peak to peak, two volts peak to peak. All right, and this is the trigger over here. Okay, so it's going to trigger to this up here, the the upper, the little T, the triangle with the little T. Now, uh, so basically, we we're seeing the exact same thing that we we're seeing before. Uh, the zero line for channel two is over here. We can superimpose it if we want, uh, and we could do whatever, whatever we need to do. To uh, uh, we're basically showing you how to use the. Uh, the scope itself and uh, how this uh, particular sensor works and what it, what it outputs. So this is a, an analog uh, sine wave. Uh, this is a two-wire sensor, okay, as we uh, saw before in here. The first step in testing and proving a magnetic WSS is to read its resistance value. You do this by using a multimeter, disconnecting the WSS, connecting and measuring across the two WSS terminals, then compare to proper specifications. The second step is to reconnect the WSS and connect the oscilloscope to the very end of the WSS2 terminal wires. If possible, do so right at the ABS computer itself. In this way you are testing both the WSS and the wires to it. Look for a 2 volts peak to peak most modules need at least a 2 volt peak to peak signal for it to be recognized. So, um, so basically you, you tap into one of the wires, it's going to give you the signal. Okay? And, um, and so the, it's, this is a very straightforward uh, explanation uh, on how to test the, uh, uh, the wheel speak sensor. Uh, we'd like to thank you for tuning in to our video uh, and to our channel, ADP Training. Um, we on the bottom of the screen uh, you see a bunch of little icons in there one of them has a little dollar sign if you want to uh, donate anything uh, there's also a, a, the ability you can actually become a member of the channel uh, for about you know five bucks a month something like that very very low you know uh, and, and really helps us out because we don't really we do these videos for free and if you enjoy the channel and you look you like automotive diagnostics and this is what you like to do uh, we appreciate your support, okay? So again, uh, thank you for tuning in to our channel and thank you for watching. Hello everybody and welcome to another video. 
In today's video, we are going to um, uh, talk about uh, testing um, the um, w uh, wheel speed sensor or vehicle speed sensors. These are digital sensors. Uh, so in this particular case, as you can see on screen, we actually want to start the, the scope and we're going to choose the vehicle diagnostics, okay, um, which is the, it actually has a series of um, um, sections, so ignition sensors, uh, bus diagnostics, engine and uh, startup and charge. We're going to go into the sensor diagnostics. There's one of them that's a digital speed sensor, okay. This is what it looks like. Now, this is what the digital speed sensor looks like. And basically what we're going to do, um, in this particular case, we have, this is either the front, uh, re uh, left and right, or the rear, or there's also a type of digital speed sensor that has actually outputs two separate signals. Okay, now uh, it depends on what you have. At a minimum, this sensor has to have at least three uh, uh, wires coming out, three leads, uh, a reference voltage, uh, which is usually five volts, a ground, and a sensor, a, a signal uh, wire coming out. Speed. In many newer systems, the WSS is connected to the ABS computer. Then the ABS computer transmits the data over the network to the ECM or engine computer therefore using the WSS as a vehicle speed sensor. The signal wire may not necessarily have to be the center wire. I get that question asked a lot. Is the center wire the signal wire sometimes, but not always. Okay, so in this particular case, uh, we tap into the signal wire, whichever that happens to be according to the wiring diagram. Anyhow, so the upper two signals that you see here, these are reference signals that the, the, the software gives you so that you have an idea what they look like. Now, it may be a good idea, and we're gonna, what we're going to do right now is we're going to connect uh, channel 2 uh, to a reference signal that's outputted by the scope itself. This is a little prong on the side of the scope. You can actually you clap, you clip into it. And uh, right away you're going to see, okay, this is what it looks like. <clears throat> now, when testing digital signals, especially the wheel speed sensor signals, um, the same goes for the vehicle speed sensor signal, uh, it may be a good idea for you to compress the time frame a little bit. That way, you pretty much uh, can capture as many uh, cycles as possible. Uh, but you have to play with it because it, does, it doesn't always... Uh, uh, I mean, it doesn't always give give you a good uh, resolution. So we're going to go right now, and we're going to play around with the. Uh, so we are we're at one millisecond. We're going to go up the other way around. <coughs> we're at five milliseconds, ten milliseconds, okay, twenty milliseconds. Now we now we start compressing the signal. As you can see, we're only using one channel. This particular, uh, we're only using channel one. Now, what we're going to do also, we're going to click on channel here. And we're going to turn off channel one, okay? That way, we only have channel two, okay? Uh, that way, it uh, makes the scope a little faster. You don't have to, but that's just, that's what we're going to do. So, we are right now, we are at 50 milliseconds, okay? Now you can see you can you're packing a lot a lot of uh, uh, cycles in on the signal itself, okay. And as you can see, we're playing around. We're we're create, creating glitches in there, okay. That way. So these are the glitches. These are little glitches that we're creating and we're packing. They happen very quick though. But however, since we're packing so many uh, cycles on the waveform, uh, on, the, on the screen, uh, you can pretty much see everything. There's a, another way, there's a way to actually go and uh, um, we, can, we can actually record all, all the signals, you know, popping up 
And that way we can actually, we can go for a road test and then come back and analyze and say, we're going to show you that in another video, how to pack a bunch of, uh, uh, on the recording. Um, and then again, uh, there's different ways to actually t uh, trigger the scope. This is auto trigger. We can do normal trigger. And that's a recording that we created, okay? We can actually do single trigger. And uh, you can't see now nothing because nothing is happening. We're not creating any glitches. And then we can do the, uh, the original um, auto trigger. Auto trigger, in this particular case, it's, uh, it's the best way uh, because we, we don't know when the glitches are gonna happen, okay? Uh, because you're going out for road tests and there, how are you going to know how you're going to trigger to to the glitch because you don't know when the glitch is going to happen so uh so this is uh again there's uh we can keep on playing around with the with the signal and you can actually turn off uh the the reference here if you go into this little button up here you turn off the the reference in there okay in this particular case It may make the, the scope a little faster. I think we just lost channel one. There you go. Channel two. There you go. Now we only have channel two. We don't have the reference signals. N nothing is running on. It's just the reference signals are not running anyways. But they take away from the resolution. Uh, if you're trying to measure, so th so this is this is again, we are creating a glitch, and that's what they look like. Uh, if we increase the time base a little a little further, at one point in time, it's, you're not going to be able to see anything because it's just, just too much. But this is by far the best way that I could actually teach you so that you can actually capture, rather than just concentrate on one single cycle, which is not going to say anything. I mean, if you go, like, let's say we go back to the the five millisecond the way we were before I mean it's so you can even see the cycle you can it's going up and down because the cycle is so compressed okay this, this is a micro uh, 500 microsecond let's go to uh, let's go to one millisecond for example so this is one millisecond okay if I were to introduce a see right now I'm introducing glitches, or oh, you just saw it right now because it was just it was such a long glitch. But if if see glitch after glitch, you may be able to capture it here and there. But if it's fast, the way the way it happens in real life, you won't be able to see it. Like right now, I'm introducing one glitch after the other, and there's nothing there's nothing there. Unless it's really, really long, you know. Again, we have to go into, we're going to go into 100 milliseconds again. Let me see, I think I went, I went 100 seconds, that's too, too much. 100 milliseconds, there you go. Not 100 seconds, 100 milliseconds. Now you can see it. Now we're introducing glitch one after the other. See, you can see it, right? That's the only way. Compress your signal, your time base, and that way you can actually go uh, and you'll be able to, to capture glitches, as many as you can, as many as possible. Again, there's another way, which is to record the signal. We're, gonna, we're not going to do that in this video, but we're going to do that in the future. Uh, we're going to show you that. This, this, this scope has that capability. So, uh, again, this is, uh, we're going to do that. We're going to do the same on channel, channel 1. So, we're going to on hook from channel two we're going to do the same on channel one and we're going to go and turn on channel one and turn off channel two 
and then you're going to see the same deal on channel on channel two I mean on channel one which is the yellow and again you can see the glitch we're doing the same thing we're creating one glitch after the other now we're going to create a couple of glitches uh, every second or so and this is what you see these are pretty fast glitches you know so again you know uh, we did the same deal with two channels so just showing you how you know how uh, how powerful did this technique uh, and then again if you want to capture sometimes you do want to do that you want to capture each signal each cycle uh, then you want to increase what you want to do later is what you want to increase let me see if I could do this here you want to increase or decrease the time base see if you increase the time base and you this is the zero line you go up with the zero line a little bit and you keep increasing the time base you can actually expand the amplitude and what you're looking for is this guy here let me show you so we're gonna go down with the time base you're gonna look for this here this guy here and this guy down here so with this is the low end of the waveform it should be very close to this little line here which is the zero line okay now if this is way up here then there's something wrong with the ground okay for this particular sensor the same goes for the top the top should be around 5 volts it could be 4.8 even 4.5 okay uh, if it's below that then you have resistance in the wire so you're looking for and let, let, let me spread the, the waveform a little bit more even more I just want to be able to see each cycle this is the one instances instance where you want to con uh, concentrate on the cycle okay so we're gonna go raise the zero line right now uh, and then we can actually see the zero line let me see if I could plot a uh, uh, a cursor okay let me see on channel one we're gonna do a horizontal cursor there let me see if I could do it there you go so this is a cursor this is the zero line right now I'm showing you the zero line as you can see over here the uh, waveform itself is reaching below zero so th this is perfect okay now you also want to look at the at the top okay uh, the top should be around in this particular case if you, if you look over here it fights five volts okay give me one second and we can actually um, this is typical of, 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 of vehicle speed sensors and wheel speed sensors uh, that are digital digital so it'll give you a 5 volt reference so right away you tested the ground and the and the uh, and the voltage reference uh, very easily and very quickly uh, we, you don't even you didn't even do measurements you, all you did was scope out the the signal itself and you know that this the ground is fine uh, even if you have a problem with your ABS computer right uh, who provides the the ground for this particular sensor is the ABS computer right away you know that the ABS computer is grounded properly you don't even have to go and test the ground at the ABS because if, if the ground is fine at the, at the wheel speed sensors then, then you're fine it's giving you a proper ground uh, the ABS computer is grounded properly and the same goes for the upper um, uh, for the 5 volts this is giving you proper 5 volts so uh, whatever issues you have it's going to be related to something other than a mechanical problem the reluctor uh, or the sensor itself that's uh, defective you know uh, but the issue is not coming from the uh, in this one case this particular case is not coming from the um, uh, uh, from the uh, from the computer from the ABS computer okay so again uh, this is another we just show you another technique 
on testing uh, wheel speed sensors from vehicle speed sensors. They're pretty much the same. Uh, uh, we'd like to thank you for tuning into our channel ADP Training, um, where you uh, pretty much uh, whatever it's. Uh, uh, we discuss everything automotive uh, related, uh, automotive technology, sensor testing, diagnostics, uh, electronics, you name it. Anyhow, uh, so we uh, appreciate it if you go below the uh, the video here and give us a thumbs up. Uh, there's also ways to uh, uh, either subscribe to our channel for a little bit of money, maybe, maybe five bucks a month, uh, and or um, you can actually donate using the little uh, dollar sign button that you see on the, at the bottom of the of the screen uh, again um, this is a free channel we don't charge for for this channel uh, we rely on donations uh, from you guys and every little bit helps because it, it costs a lot of money to to do these videos uh, but anyhow we'd like to thank you for tuning into our channel adp training and thank you for watching Hello everybody and welcome to another video. In today's video we are going to talk about the APP Accelerator Pedal Position Sensor testing and using the 8-channel oscilloscope. As you can see on screen this is the 8-channel uh, scope that we have on our website autodiagnosticsandpublishing.com. Now uh, this uh, scope is a completely reinforced uh, scope that we carry on our website. We add uh, components to it uh, extra capacitors, diodes, and so on and so forth, uh, which we use for, I mean, the, to make it more, uh, m even more so for automotive purposes. It is an eight-channel scope, it is, but it, we definitely make it even more so for automotive purposes. Now, on screen, as you can see here, is the, uh, uh, the navigation for the software on the screen itself. Uh, on the uh, on the software itself in other words yeah, so you go into uh, uh, sensors uh, and within sensors itself you go there's a bunch of different sensors that you have uh, and so one of those is the sensor the actual sensor you have actuator sensors ignition and so on and so forth and so you go into the sensor um, uh, component and it's all it's, everything is in the setup and as you go uh, come across different sensors, you can actually uh, update or add it uh, to the software itself. And you can create your own uh, uh, waveform, a website, within the scope itself. So again, now you go into the different sensors that, we, that you have, that you see on the, uh, on the software. And this is part of the software. And you go into the APP sensor, the Accelerator Pedal Position Sensor. And as you can see on screen... Uh, the APP sensor itself, uh, we're going to show you a short uh, video clip. The accelerator pedal position sensor is of central importance to the drive-by-wire system. This sensor is designed to provide the ECM with accelerator pedal position as well as its rate of change, or how fast the driver is pushing on the gas pedal. Now, going back to the video itself, okay, um, Basically, what you what you see on screen right now, uh, it's a um, you can see the upper two waveforms are the uh, the, the, the whatever it's uh, the sample waveforms on the on, on the um, on the software. Okay, uh, so you have the two uh, yellow and blue uh, waveforms, and you see the uh, the the APP sensor going up and down. Uh, and then you also have on the bottom you have channels one and two so take a look at this video clip connect each channel to the two or three potentiometer output signals the need for a multi-channel scope is becoming more apparent as more sensors will be added to future vehicles with the scope connected check the output signals with the APB sensor at rest compare to proper specifications then slowly press on the accelerator pedal and observe for any glitches or sudden drops in signal voltage. This procedure is somewhat similar to checking a TPS sensor. Okay, back to the video. So as you can see on the video itself, um, we have uh, the upper two um, um, uh, signals that you, that you see on the, on the waveform. These are the pre-programmed sample waveforms. Okay, uh, none of these show a, uh, a glitch. 
so basically, it, it just shows you a sample wave. This is the this is what the APP sensor uh, signal should look like with a good uh, sensor itself. You know, when if you have a good sensor, uh, and then um, we'll go further that further down, you're going to see, uh, for example. Um, The lower flat lines are the uh, connected uh, channels one and two. Okay. Now channels one and two, of course, are the you know we're not connected to an APP sensor, uh, but we're going to show you signals and what uh, uh, the, the scope itself, uh, you know, what glitches look like. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, whenever when the sensor is uh, selected, it actually sets itself up, so you don't have to uh, reset the. Uh, uh, set the amplitude. You don't, you don't have to do any settings whatsoever. Uh, it simply goes into and it sets itself to, to the right uh, to the right setting. Now on the uh, in yellow here, you as you can see, this is a, a square waveform that we're inputting into the sensor itself, uh, just to show you uh, uh, what it you know what what a signal uh, should, would look like. <clears throat> so this is only a square wave signal that, and by the way, the scope itself has a, an output for the square wave, uh, so that you can test the channels. Okay, once you can test it, once you test the channels, then you know that the um, uh, you know the scope is working properly. Now, using the right wiring diagrams as a reference is important. Uh, the AVP sensor, as you saw in the little video clips that we have from our video library. Uh, it gives you uh, two outputs, and these are the outputs, the upper two outputs that you see on screen, the sample waveforms. And basically, uh, you get uh, these uh, outputs are important because these are for redundant, uh, uh, because we have right now uh, drive-by wire systems. And the drive-by wire systems, basically, you need redundant uh, APP sensors because in case one of them fails, you have the other one. That's why, that's why it's called redundant. Okay. Uh, so anyhow, and that that's basically what is uh, uh, why we have uh, these uh, uh, dual signals. Sometimes it's a triple signal um, uh, APP sensor. Now uh, going back to, uh, to to the video here, uh, basically the video the, the scope itself, as, as we said before, it's uh, reinforced. Uh, you know, for us, to, uh, for, for you to do uh, automotive uh, uh, work. <clears throat> Again, this was a very simple video just to introduce you to the uh, navigation of the uh, oscilloscope itself and basic operation of the APP sensor uh, that you saw in the video clips. Now, uh, we'd like to thank you for tuning into our, our channel ADP Training, uh, where we expose you to um, automotive technology, diagnostics, and so on and so forth. Uh, we recommend that you uh, uh, subscribe to our channel. Uh, also, we have a website, autodiagnosticsandpublishing.com, where you can also subscribe to our newsletter and all that. And you, we always giving out free stuff every month. Uh, uh, a software here, a book, video clip, you know, book, an ebook clip there, and you know what have you. But it's all free stuff, anyways. You know. Uh, why not? You know. So anyway, so so try to our website. So so try to our channel here, ADP training, and of course, you know, if uh, on, at the bottom of the of the YouTube screen here on the video screen, you you see a little dollar sign. That's if you want to donate uh, a few bucks to, to to our channel. You know, it, this is a free channel, and it costs a lot of money to do this stuff. So anyhow, we like to thank you for tuning into our channel, ADP training, and thank you for watching. Buddy, and welcome to another video. In today's video, we are going to uh, go into the uh, the sensor side of the um, the eight-channel scope to test the uh, air intake pressure sensor. Uh, this is a Bosch unit, um, and it's a diesel unit as well. <clears throat> so as you can see on screen, uh, on the top of the screen, this is what you get. Uh, this is the actual. Um, uh, in other words, this this is the it's a sample waveform over here. Okay, so uh, the sample waveform we don't have a sensor. We're gonna we're gonna show you a, a signal, uh, but we don't have uh, a, a diesel engine right now to show you, show you what it looks like. But it looks like this. This is actual the actual sample. And what you what you see here it's a 
it's a goose, a wide open throttle goose of the uh, uh, air intake pressure sensor, pretty much. Uh, and no, so this is it's typical to the barrel sensor, the barometer, the barometer sensor. Uh, so, uh, but it, it's it's more critical when it comes to uh, diesel engines because of the fact that diesels have a little vacuum, and so uh, if you have, especially if it has a turbo in there, uh, so it's uh, uh, the computer can. Uh, ascertain a lot of information from from this particular uh, particular signal okay and so basically you know but it's it's it, it there's nothing to it it's, you know this is uh it is a uh, goose wide open throttle signal uh that you see when you goose the throttle um and um and that's pretty much it you know uh so this is the vehicle at idle over here uh the beginning of, of the signal uh and then Wide, full wide open throttle and then this is the de deceleration period uh, and it takes a little bit of time for this for the uh, for the signal to settle down okay uh, because of the um, uh, you know whatever uh, the friction on the engine and what have you <coughs> so anyhow so uh, this is a very simple video there's not much to uh, go by uh, I mean when you choose the, this particular sensor and this what you're seeing now at the bottom uh, this is the this is uh, an injection a signal injection that we're injecting uh, on this on, on the uh, on channel one uh, this is what you would see now just to let you know there is a provision on the side of the scope uh, which is a test signal okay uh, and you you actually you pick that signal this is this is uh, this is the signal generator that we're using right now uh, so, uh, you know, the, there's there's uh, the 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 signal on the, on the side of the scope. Uh, it's a um, I think it's a two volt peak to peak. It's a one kilohertz signal, similar to this right here. This is about one point. No, this is actually twenty. This is twenty hertz. This is a very low frequency. And so, uh, but anyhow, so you can actually clip on the side of the scope, and you don't even need a signal generator with this particular scope. Okay. Uh, to test uh, and so over here you pretty much change the uh, uh, the um, the time base to spread the signal around okay um, the signal generator allows me to change to between uh, sine wave or square wave okay this has nothing to do with this particular sensor this is just us messing around with it with the inputs input input signal now uh, just so that you know this here is the trigger. If we go off of the signal, the, the signal starts jumping around. Okay, uh, and this one here, uh, there is a trigger here on the top. Okay, so the intersection between these two lines, this this guy here, this guy here, and the trigger on the top, it's where it triggers. So if you're not getting anything in this particular uh, position, then you, it's not really going to trigger off of anything. Uh, now, if we lower the trigger a little bit, then the signal stabilizes, as you see. Uh, and so, anyhow, uh, you may need to do that when testing the air intake pressure sensor to be able to, if you want to catch, uh, say, for example, uh, a glitch uh, at some point in the, in the signal. So, say you want to catch a glitch over here. Let me see if I could raise the, the trigger. You will raise the trigger somewhere around here. Okay, so it's going to trigger right around here. Okay, now let me see if I could if I could insert the lines here for the trigger. Uh, give me one second. I do know that. Uh, you know, let me see if there is a way to trigger. Okay, this is the edge of the trigger. Because we can, you can trigger on edge, rising edge, falling edge, stuff like that. Uh, Okay, so this is a way for uh, for me to show you uh, the trigger intersection lines. Uh, so basically, this is this is what what we do: you trigger over here, and then you trigger over here. Okay, so this is the trigger right around here. Okay, this is just to show you where. So if we get a glitch right here, as soon as it crosses that point. Now uh, it it triggers, okay, 
Uh, uh, say we we, we raise the trigger a little bit. Now we're gonna gonna have the trigger over here and over here. So here, that's what we have. Okay. In other words, you know, we are trying to trigger off of uh, to p find the trigger. If we don't find, if the signal never goes above this point here, it's not going to trigger. You, so you're you're not going to see anything. Uh, but this is very useful if you have a, a, a sensor that's going off scale and it's, it's giving you an, an issue uh, whereby, you know, you get a glitch, a spike, and that's, that's how you set it up to trigger off of that particular point. So this is just a, a uh, like an add-on that we did here on the video. So just to, uh, uh, this, this video is pretty much, it's a very simple video uh, because it's, um, it doesn't really go, uh, this is a very simple sensor to test, so uh, anyhow. So we'd like to thank you for tuning in to our channel, ATP Training, uh, and uh, pretty much where we show you all kinds of uh, uh, automotive technology stuff, uh, diagnostics, repairs, how uh, specific sensors and electronics, especially the electronics, uh, how they work, uh, and uh, so on and so forth. At uh, the bottom of the, if you look further down, away, f you know, off of the, uh, the, the the actual video, you're going to see a couple of links or, or, or little uh, um, little figures in there, so that one of them has like a little dollar sign. That's if you want to donate. Uh, there's another one to be uh, subscribed to our channel, like a paid subscriber for like five bucks a month, you know, something like that, which is very inexpensive uh, to you guys, and it really helps us out quite a bit because because this is getting very expensive. Uh, I mean, it's always been expensive, but it's even more expensive now as we go forward. Uh, anyhow, so, m you know, a lot of issues, you know, the related relating to uh, the pr production of these videos is, is it's, uh, it's very time consuming, you know. So anyhow, we'd like to thank you for tuning in to our channel. Uh, if you want to uh, give us a donation, we really appreciate it. Uh, so uh, thank you for tuning in and thank you for watching. Welcome to another video. In today's video, we are going to um, uh, study and analyze uh, the uh, inductive camshaft position sensor. The cam sensor lets the ECM know the camshaft's rotational speed and position. There are three main types of cam position sensors. The magnetic, Hall effect, and magnetone resistive sensors. The last two work the same way and produce a square wave. The magnetic sensor generates its own signal. It is composed of an internal coil that captures the magnetic field and has two wires. One wire is the sensor ground and the other is the signal wire itself. <clears throat> now as you can see on screen, uh, first we go into the vehicle diagnostics. Um, that's the side of the uh, eight channel uh, scope that we carry on our uh, website. Uh, so we're going to video um, vehicle diagnostics. Uh, then we go into the sensor side of it. We have other videos, by the way, that actually um, uh, train you on how um, you know how to navigate uh, the whole software, which is uh, very broad. <coughs> and then we go into the camshaft inductive sensor, and we'll explain what that means. So anyhow, uh, on screen right now, uh, the first, the upper waveform, it's a sample waveform. Okay, this is this is how the inductive uh, sample waveform looks like. So basically, you have uh, a sample waveform uh, fr uh, from which to uh, to draw uh, some examples. Uh, they all look the same, pretty much. Now we're going to inject another sine wave. Uh, on, on the bottom line, which is channel 1, and over here to the left-hand side, this is the zero line, okay? The zero line, it's uh, basically it's a zero line, it's exactly what it, what it means, okay? Over here, <coughs> on the, at the top, in the center, this is, we're moving it, you know, left and right. This is the trigger, okay? This is the trigger for the vertical. And this right here to the left, to the right-hand side, is the trigger for the horizontal, okay? And we'll explain what that means, um, you know, in a while. So, uh, we're going to inject a signal right now, very slowly. 
we're going to start off with a 20 hertz signal okay this is what it looks like this is it's a sine wave this is all very almost the same as a um, the signal for the that you would get on the upper screen <coughs> uh, the only difference is that this is a repeatable this is a repeated signal and we're going to um, we're going to compress the waveform uh, a little bit more okay that way you could get pack a couple of cycles and we're going to increase the amplitude okay to about two volts peak to peak that means from here from the top of the crest to the bottom of the crest that's peak to peak okay <coughs> so uh right now that's what it looks like and it almost corresponds to a um a, an idling because the upper sample waveform uh it's an idle uh, engine <coughs> and then uh, at the bottom, it's, it's the injected signal. This is the actual injection signal. Now we're going to go, and we're going to raise the trigger, just so that you understand. We're going to raise the trigger away, okay, from the signal. Now you're going to see that 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 waveform uh, uh, wobbling, you know, back and forth. Why? Because it's not being triggered. Let's see if we could just plot some lines in there, okay? There you go. Let's see if we could plot some lines in there. There we go. Okay, so this is more or less the, the trigger right now. So we center, okay. This, the cross section is the exact point. We're gonna move the trigger a little bit to the, to the left, okay, and see if that, so we're gonna, this is the trigger, okay. A little bit more, there you go. And a little bit further down, okay. So over here and over here, where these two lines intersect, that's the trigger line okay now we're going to move the trigger a little bit further down to over here okay and then it's uh, you're going to see the the waveform uh some of you may know this already you know but a lot of you do not so we're explaining it here so we're going to move the, the trigger line over here and then you're going to see that see the waveform how it's stabilized because it's being triggered so long as you move that center point somewhere between here the upper and the bottom crest, uh, you're going to be triggering the signal. The, this, this is a magnetic camshaft sensor. It's the same for a magnetic crankshaft sensor, and it's also the same for many other sensors on vehicles. If you want to capture the waveform, you have to basically you have to uh, trigger the signal somehow. Okay, uh, and that's pretty much it. There's really not much to explain. Now we could compress the signal, see if, if we could do that a little bit more, but it's the same deal. It doesn't really matter how much you compress the signal. Okay, we're not doing anything with the signal, by the way. We're compre compressing the time base, okay, so that the scope, you know, packs more signals in there. Sometimes if you want to capture glitches, okay, this is exactly what you're going to do, okay? See? And we're going we're gonna to compress it a bit more. At uh, some point in time, if for whatever reason uh, we get a glitch, we're going to try and mimic. We're going to try and imitate a glitch right now. See if you could capture it. Okay? See that? Those are glitches. See, those are glitches. What we're doing is we're, we're connecting and disconnecting very fast because I could do that with, a, with the, uh, the signal generator. And you could capture glitches. This is how you capture glitches. Okay? Now, if your, uh, your waveform is... <coughs> you're looking at only one cycle like now not even la we're gonna back to where we were say we're looking at one cycle only okay now what we're creating glitches right now you can barely see the glitches we're doing it one after the other one after the other uh, now if you do i mean if, if they're long enough you could capture them but not not like right now we're doing one every second one glitch every second and you can't see them sometimes you can sometimes you cannot okay especially if they're too fast why because you're looking at only one one um, um, one cycle when you're looking at one cycle uh, that's what happens okay so you need to um, increase the time base so here we are at 100 milliseconds 200 milliseconds about one second okay right now we're packing five seconds okay so the whole screen is going to be comprised of, of, of five seconds of waveforms, okay? And it's going to repeat, repeat the same thing over and over again, 
okay? So what you're seeing right now are repeated waveforms, okay? There's no glitches right now, but the moment we introduce a glitch, okay, you start seeing them, you know? There you go, right there, right there, right there, right there, okay? Why? Because we're packing so many, you know, so many of them. And you got to play around with, with, with this stuff, you know. Sometimes, you know, you, you don't see them. And you have to lower, it, you know, go into two seconds, a little, you know, and, and see if you can catch them. Okay, there you go, see? Those are glitches right there. Those are glitches. See? No. That's just the way it is, okay? Uh, I'm just, just, this has nothing to do with the uh, cam sen camshaft uh, sensor signal. Okay, but it's just a way, another technique to show you how to uh, uh, use the oscilloscope to uh, be able to help you help you out, you know. You do the same with the crank sensor, by the way, okay, and that's pretty much it, you know. So again, we just show you triggers, okay, and we show you how to pack more signals uh, on the time base so that you can actually capture glitches. Now, the same goes for the, um, so, so we off, okay, again, we're going to go off. And you're going to see that waveform waver, see? Because now it's a little bit further to the top, okay? A little bit further. It'll be right there, okay? And again, you know, this is very, very important when using the scope, okay? Uh, there's so m there are so many techniques that you're going to learn from this particular series, okay? This is the second series that we have on using the, uh, uh, the oscilloscope. Uh, we're, we're going by sensor by sensor, and then we're going to go actuator by actuator, and then we're going to do a whole series on, on using the scope, okay? This is an eight-channel scope that we carry on our website, autodiagnosticsandpublishing.com. Um, again, uh, we like to uh, thank you for tuning into our channel uh, here on YouTube, ADP Training, uh, where we pretty much showcase all kinds of techniques and uh, training uh, for the do-it-yourselfer, uh, auto mechanic, and the professional alike. Uh, believe it or not, very few techs know how to use an oscilloscope. Uh, that's just it. You know, throughout my training, I do a lot of seminars and training through all over the country. And basically, this is the biggest issue that uh, technicians have because uh, oscilloscopes are v very uh, intimidating for a lot of people, and they're meant for more for the uh, engineers than, than technicians. But that's just the way it is. You know, cars are more complicated now than they ever been. Anyhow. So uh, thank you for tuning into our channel, ADP Training. Uh, the bottom of the screen of, of that you're watching right now, uh, you can see a little dollar sign where you can actually donate right through YouTube. Uh, you can go into the uh, um, uh, descriptions of the video, and there's a, a link in there for uh, our uh, PayPal so that you can actually donate. Uh, or you can become a member for a couple of dollars a month, you know, five bucks a month, something like that. Uh, we really appreciate it because these videos are very, very uh, costly to produce, okay? So again, thank you for tuning in and thank you for watching. Welcome to another video. In today's video, we are going to talk about the uh, hardwire master flow s sensor. <coughs> uh, and as you can see on screen, uh, this is the, uh, the starting, uh, whenever we start the... Uh, uh, the oscilloscope, the eight-channel oscilloscope, we get the, uh, we go into vehicle diagnostics and we go into sensors, and then there's uh, the third uh, icon in there is the uh, airflow meter hot wire. Okay, <coughs> now this is what the signal should look like. Okay, now this signal it's uh, uh, it's a compound signal pretty much. This this is a signal at wide open throttle. Okay. So this is a, a by, while goosing the accelerator to uh, wide open throttle, okay? So as you can see here, wide open throttle, you let go. When you let go of the accelerator, it goes up and then decelerates, okay? So this is what it should look like, okay? Now, um, this signal, uh, and as you can see, we're going to post a, a short video of, from one of our libraries, you know, for video libraries uh, of, of how this sensor works. The hot wire mass airflow sensor is a device that measures incoming air by the amount of current flow needed to maintain a specific temperature across a hot platinum wire element. 
as the air enters the intake duct and cools down the hot wire element, the mass airflow sensor circuitry will increase or decrease the current needed to maintain that specific temperature. The change in current is then converted into a voltage signal which is then used by the ECM as a signal for airflow. Also remember that the voltage output signal produced by the hot wire mass airflow sensor is directly proportional to the amount of air entering the engine. So that, as air flow increases, so does the voltage output of the sensor unit. There are various types of mass airflow sensors using the hot wire principle. In this photograph we see a mass airflow with multiple hot wire elements. Regardless of the type, they all work the same, which is by changing the current across the hot wire to maintain a specific temperature. Now, uh, back, back to the, to the video. video. Uh, basically, basically, what, what you're, you're looking, looking for is or is the uh, the reflex of the hot wire mass airflow sensor. The hot wire mass airflow sensor, uh, exactly as the name implies, you know, it it's a hot wire. Uh, it's made out of uh, titanium, or um, I'm sorry, uh, platinum. Uh, so it's a little tiny wire that's made out of platinum. Uh, and so basically what you, uh, you know, there is a little circuit inside that what it does is it looks at the uh, current needed to maintain a specific voltage uh, or temperature across that wire, which that's why it's called hot wire. Now, uh, once it, uh, it uh, depending on the flow of air, uh, basically this, this is what happens. So the more flow of air, the higher the voltage. Okay, so you can see over here. Okay, and then, and then it goes, uh, this is, goose the throttle so one open throttle and let go and so this is the reflex of letting go or letting go of the uh, uh, of the accelerator and then coming down so uh, as you can see the upper signal is the, uh, the 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 sample signal okay this is typical of this particular software uh, and the uh, down here we have uh, the actual uh, channel one of the of the scope okay so here we have we have the trigger up here. Let me see. And so uh, and then we have the the trigger is also over here to to the side. I think it froze up for for the time being, but that's fine. Uh, basically, we're gonna. There you go. So this is this is the signal. Uh, it's a 20 hertz signal, so it's not really uh, the signal for the wide open throttle because we're not connected to a car. Uh, but uh, just to show you that um, the, the the scope itself sets itself for whatever you're trying to do. In this particular case, up here it says airflow meter, hard wire. So all you got to do is connect channel one. Uh, to the signal wire for the master of flow sensor and that's it pretty much uh, it, it's a pretty straightforward um, I mean this thing is incredible you know as far as the uh, the, the software itself you know uh, the hardware of the scope it's fantastic you know you can get uh, for, for the amount of money we sell this on our website what we do is we buy it in quantities in bulk from them uh, from, from the company that makes it and then uh, we actually uh, we beef it up uh, for automotive purposes. It's already made for automotive purposes, but we put extra diodes. Uh, this should have been there in, to begin with, you know, but they didn't do it. So uh, we put uh, diodes and some capacitors in there to uh, uh, make it more suitable for automotive use. Okay, uh, and then so that's what we sell on our website. And then you can buy our, our, our unit uh, bundle with a bunch of different. Uh, uh, add-ons and uh, we have a very nice ignition uh, probe uh, which is fantastic it's, it's the best on the market pretty much uh, forget about pico none of that crap you know this is uh, this is 10 times cheaper and probably 10 times better uh, not because of anything it's going to do the same thing as a pico uh, but you know basically it's it's we would build the add-ons for for this particular units okay so Pico doesn't do that. So we have uh, current sensors, current probes that you can actually use with this. Uh, and we have the ignition probes also. We have, I mean, we have a lot. 
uh, for the scope. Okay, so anyhow, uh, thank you for tuning into our channel, ADP Training. Um, basically, we, we do everything here for automotive uh, diagnostics, uh, for training people, uh, do it yourselfers, um, professional technicians uh, all over the world. Pretty much, we have customers every, everywhere. Uh, so, uh, we like you for you to look at the screen and fr uh, at the bottom of the screen, outside the screen, you're going to see a the little dollar sign. This is for you to, uh, if you want to give us some donations, uh, five bucks, whatever you can afford. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, also, the um, um, then you can become a member too of the channel uh, for five bucks a month, something like that, which is nice, it's peanuts, you know. And these videos are very, very expensive to produce, believe it or not. Uh, we have a bunch of software, you know, stuff that we have, you know, that we uh, we use for, you know, for the uh, for these purposes. So, uh, you know, it, it doesn't really uh, pay to do these things. It's just for us, uh, it does because we, you know, that this is what we do. Okay. Uh, but anyhow, we appreciate you uh, tuning into our channel, ADP Training, and thank you for watching. Hey, and welcome to another video. In today's video, we are going to uh, analyze the signal of an AC excited cam sensor. The cam sensor lets the ACM know the camshaft's rotational speed and position. There are three main types of cam position sensors. The magnetic, Hall effect, and magneto-resistive sensors. The last two work the same way, and produce a square wave. The magnetic sensor generates its own signal. It is composed of an internal coil that captures the magnetic field, and has two wires. One wire is the sensor ground, and the other is the signal wire itself. To test these sensors, connect an oscilloscope or graphing multimeter, such as the ADP Scope 1 Pro. Crank the engine and look for a sine or rounded waveform. A minimum of 2 volts peak to peak is needed for the signal to get recognized by the module. So on screen right now, as you can see, we're uh, going into the uh, sensor diagnostics and there's the camshaft uh, AC excited sensor. Okay, now this uh, the bottom two uh, signals is the uh, um, channels one and two. This this is the actual scope reading. The upper two signals are sample signals. As you can see, the signals are out of phase with each other. Now the way it works, and on screen right now we're showing you a um, um, the actual. We have like a. Let me see if I could put it up on screen. So this is the this is the signal itself, okay? Uh, basically, what you see right now is an upper signal, uh, which is in uh, blue. That's the signal itself. In other words, that's what you s what that's what the ECM sees, okay? Uh, the, the upper signal, the upper waveform is the signal. Th this sensor is different. This is a weirdo. In the, uh, in the automotive world. This, there's no other sensor like it. It actually gets a 100 to 150 kilohertz signal from the ECM. That's, uh, that, that, that's the actual uh, signal. Uh, and as soon as it, it crosses the number one TDC, the sensor ID, then it, it outputs a signal, okay, which is the signal that you see right now, the one in blue. The one in red is always on. So it's, it's, a, it's an AC signal that's sent by the ECM to the sensor. Okay, so you have three wires. Uh, sensor uh, return, the signal, and the, uh, the ground wire. So again, uh, this, is a, it, this is a different sensor altogether uh, from everybody else. So going back into the, uh, uh, the waveform here, uh, you would have to set your scope in a, at around 20 uh, microseconds to be able to capture this signal. We're going to input a signal now. Uh, we're going to try and mimic exactly what th what that's going to look like. Okay, so as you can see on screen right now, we are 20 um, milliseconds 
We're gonna have to go down. Let's see if we could capture it here. Okay, so right now we um, we have our sensor um, signal generator uh, set to about 150 kilohertz because it's times 100. So it's 1.5 kilohertz times 100. Uh, and basically that's exactly what we're at right now. Uh, we're at 10 microseconds. And this is what the signal looks like uh, when you see a, a single uh, waveform. Let me see if we could. Okay. Uh, this is one channel. This is channel one. Now, so this is the signal that you would see, okay, uh, coming from the ECM, okay. Uh, by the way, this is, there's nothing else on, 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 on the internet. There's no other video like it. Nobody has ever featured this particular sensor, okay. And as you can see, the frequency says 150 kilohertz. This is exactly what it would be from 100 to 150 kilohertz depending and this sensor is used is used on GMs and Vauxhall uh, vehicles so um, it's a weirdo it, there's no other sensor like it so this is what you're gonna get okay channel 1 okay and channel 2 according to the uh, uh, you could all you could get the the same signal but what you're gonna see the actual output on the signal side and we, we, we don't have channel 2 hooked up right now, which we don't really need it. Now we're going to switch to channel 2. Which is the same deal. Okay. Now. Now we're going to trigger that signal over here that's on the right hand side. That way we don't get the wavy line. We're going to show you exactly what you're going to see. As soon as it, go, it crosses the, uh, the TDC, number 1 TDC. So this is what you're going to see. That's what you're going to see. You're going to see as soon as the um, number one TDC crosses the uh, the notch, you're going to see the signal like that. That's number one TDC crossing the uh, on the cam sensor. That's what you're going to see. So the sensor gets uh, the AC signal uh, from the ECM, and it uh, it outputs the same signal once it crosses uh, the notch on the ECM and you're going to see something like this okay uh, this is it first you haven't seen this anywhere else and you're not going to see it at least up to today okay so remember the frequency that's the first thing you check you check the uh, the lower signal the yellow one that's the output from the ECM that's always going to be there okay and the uh, the blue one this is what you're going to see you're going to see a return uh, signal okay telling the ECM number one TDC we're mimicking we're actually mimicking uh, what the uh, crankshaft um, sensor sees okay if it was connected to a car okay this is uh, basically uh, anyhow <coughs> we'd like to thank you for tuning in to, uh, to our channel ADP training uh, this has been a unique video okay this is a, a this is a new sensor that's used on general motors uh and the, on the, in australia on the Vauxhall uh, system so anyhow <coughs> um this is uh, a, a unique video right here on our channel uh adp training so thank you for tuning into our channel where you have uh everything it's uh um anything automotive okay and uh, uh, forgive the allergies today. This is uh, springtime here in uh, in New York, so <laughs> uh, it's um, it's pretty bad uh, as far as the pollen and all that. Anyhow, so uh, thank you for tuning in, and thank you. For Welcome to another video. In today's video, we are going to uh, analyze and study the uh, uh, operation and testing of the uh, cam sensor Hall effect. So the, the Hall Effect sensor, uh, briefly, let's take a look at this explanation from our video library. Perform more Hall Effect sensor tests with key on, engine off. To test the Hall Effect sensor, connect a test light to battery positive. Then, probe at the sensor ECM provided ground.
you should see a bright light. Change the test light to battery ground and probe at the sensor's 12 volt reference wire. Again, the test light should be lit. Finally, to test the signal circuit, do not use a test light. Use a multimeter or oscilloscope. Connect to the sensor's signal wire. With key on, engine off should see reference voltage, usually 5 volts. Then, crank the engine and look for a square wave at the scope screen or a changing DC voltage. Magnetic sensors produce a sine wave. Hall effect sensors produce a square wave. A trick to use on a non-responsive sensor is to connect a test light to battery ground. Turn the key on, disconnect the cam sensor, and momentarily touch the signal wire. On and off. This should trigger the sensor into producing a signal. A final trick to use is to grab a soldering gun, put the back part close to the sensor, and press the trigger. The expanding magnetic field from the soldering gun will make the sensor create a signal. If no signal, then the sensor may be defective. Okay, back to the video. So here is, um, we're going to use our 8-channel um, automotive oscilloscope that we carry on our website, autodiagnosticsandpublishing.com. So we go into uh, vehicle diagnostics, then we go into the sensors, and into the camshaft hall effect sensor. And as you can see, uh, uh, the yellow um, waveform, it's a sample waveform that the, the scope software gives you, just so that, uh, as a guidance. Uh, it is a square wave, as you can see. The wave looks square, not rounded, so it's not a sine wave. Uh, and then at the bottom, that line that you see here, let's just move the, the zero line up and down, okay? This is a zero line. Uh, that's the, the actual scope channel, okay? Uh, which is uh, it's basically what we are going to have to uh, connect to the sensor wire. So we have three wires for the, as you saw on the, on the previous uh, little video clip, we have three wires, ground, uh, we have the sensor um, reference voltage, uh, usually 5 volts, it could be 8 volts, uh, and some of the older vehicles, uh, 90s, you know, uh, you, you, I even, I've even seen 12 volts as a reference voltage. And then the third wire is the output, which is the signal that, that you see, uh, the sample si signal that you see on the upper side of the waveform, uh, right here on, on, on screen. Anyhow, so we're gonna, what we're going to do now, uh, and before we go and inject a signal, uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to analyze this signal a little bit, you know, a little deeper. So this little notch here, okay, so as you can see, they're not equally spaced. This, this little guy here, this is, this is uh, it actually shows the number one TDC. Sometimes it shows number something else, TDC, not necessarily number one, usually is number one on most engines, on 90% of the engines. On some oddballs, you know, like the Volvos and all that, it may not show number one. Uh, the Mazdas do that a lot. Uh, it may show uh, something else, another another cylinder TDC. It doesn't really matter because the, the, the computer knows what to do. So basically, it, it actually t uh, takes... Uh, remember, there's two rotations of the cam per crank rotation. Okay, this is very important to understand. So, um, if you see the, the crank turning once, the cam turn twice. So, basically, you know, that's uh, uh, th that disparity of rotation between cam and crank, uh, it's important to understand. And you have to know whether the, the cylinder is on compression or on exhaust. So, this is why you have, you need a cam sensor, okay? So, uh, again, we're going to inject a signal. That's a, that's, a, that's a signal injected on cylinder, uh, on, on channel one. <coughs> so basically what we have here is a square wave signal. We can actually um, expand the time base right now as we're doing right now. Uh, this is... Uh, this signal is taken from a generator, from a signal generator, so it's not going to be a cam signal itself, but this is exactly what it looks like. 
the only thing is that this notch here is going to be present somewhere in here okay and so um, basically that that's what you're going to see uh, again uh, there's a couple of things that we want to touch upon on when it comes to cam sensors and, and these type of signals uh, in general okay one is a signal recognition threshold okay so right now we are we're at five volts peak to peak okay this this is so again this is five volts right now peak to peak so from the bottom side to the upper side let's see if we could plot some uh, some lines here um, and see what and see what that uh, looks like okay here we go here are the lines okay again this is this lower line that that's that's peak and this this is the other side of the peak okay so here we have peak to peak this is the whole waveform peak to peak okay in, in other words you know what we do here what we're doing here is using the cursors you know just to show you uh, now most signals have a two and a half volt recognition threshold so anywhere around two and a half volts of if this is five volts peak to peak this will be this will be right here would be two and a half volts okay so this signal needs to go above two and a half volts and we're talking a, a general rule of thumb okay uh, we have to go at two and a half volts to be able to uh, for the for the ECM to be able to recognize uh, that the cam signal okay this is very important because sometimes if you have resistance in the wire uh, uh, then you're not going to get that that signal recognition threshold level okay uh, then you're just, you're definitely going to have problems you know uh, the ECM will never recognize that signal so anyhow signal recognition threshold is important uh, of course uh, the other important aspect of a cam signal is the correlation between the crank signal. We don't have a crank signal here, so we can't really show you that stuff. Uh, we're going to do another video that we're going to show you uh, 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 examples of gamma crank correlation. And you can pretty much tell if you have a jump timing chain uh, on, the cr on, the, um, on the engine if you have a bad correlation between cam and crank. Uh, so anyhow... Uh, this is uh, the important the importance of, of having a signal uh, library, a waveform library. Uh, we have one, by the way, on our website. It it may not be comprehensive the way you want it to, but at least it's something, you know, and it's not that expensive. Uh, so we have that on our website. Uh, so it, it's important for you to keep your own signal uh, uh, waveform library. Uh, so that you can refer to to these signals as you need it, uh, depending on your diagnostics. Anyhow, so uh, so this is uh, pretty much it's a straightforward video. Okay, uh, we have here um, as a final note. Uh, this is the the trigger point. Okay, we've shown this before on on on, on this video series that we have. If we go off the trigger, okay. Then what you're going to do is you're going to see that, okay? You're going to see the signal, the the the, the waveform is going to be wavering in different spots, okay? You're not going to be triggering off of anything, so pretty much the the scope is just looking at stuff, you know. That's it, okay? So you need to trigger the signal, okay? You need a point of reference. This is the um, horizontal trigger. Uh, this is the vertical trigger right here, okay? right so and this is going to trigger this way and this is the horizontal trigger now if we go into the signal like we are right now then we're going to definitely going to trigger the signal so right now this is the exact trigger point let me see yeah that's it right there okay so take a, a line down vertical and horizontal and this right here this spot is the trigger point it's important because if you have issues uh, with this signal, and uh, basically, if you have a glitch, for example, you want to trigger to that glitch, uh, then you definitely uh, need to see 
to be able to, to see the, the signal. Uh, there's a lot of instances. Let me see if we can create something here. So here we're trying, see, the, we're, we're injecting a glitch in there, okay? Say we want to trigger to the glitch, okay? I want to trigger to the, I want to catch that glitch. Basically what you do is you raise the trigger point a little bit, see? A little bit above the signal itself, okay? And as soon as you get the glitch, right there. That's the glitch right there. As soon as you get the glitch, we're going to inject another glitch. That's right, that's it right there, okay? So we can only trigger to the glitch, you know? Now, let's uh, compress the time base a little bit more. Let's see if we can do it. It's the same deal. See? See the glitch right there? We can only trigger that. See? So we have the glitch on and off right now. We can only trigger that signal because we're triggering above the trigger point okay so anyhow so that's the importance of, of you know understanding why uh, triggering is important okay uh, basically you know you you try and trigger to the what you whatever you think is the uh, the issue with the with the waveform and that way if it catches it that means that there is a definitely there's a glitch in there okay when you always need to know uh, glitches because that's pretty much all the problems so anyhow we'd like to thank you for tuning into our video ADP training this was a very straightforward simple video uh, nothing complicated about this one uh, anyhow so um, uh, we love your support and uh, we have a couple of links on our description for donations and also so on and so forth uh, there's a little dollar sign further down on the screen where you can donate to our channel uh, whatever you can uh, you can also become a member for a couple of bucks a month five bucks you know something like that and that really helps us out because these videos are expensive to produce anyhow we appreciate your your time uh, uh, for tuning into our channel ADP uh, training and thank you for watching welcome to another video uh, in this video we are going to cover uh, the CAN bus uh, the data bus the CAN data bus waveform we're going to do an analysis using the a channel oscilloscope <coughs> now um so uh, right off the top we're gonna basically the, the this uh, video this video is going to be centered around the um using the um the a channel oscilloscope we carry this uh, particular scope on our website okay and uh as you can see on screen, we start off with vehicle diagnostics. This is these are this is there's a bunch of stuff pre-programmed into the scope. So the scope sets itself up for whatever it is that you're trying to measure. In this particular case, we're going into the the, the data bus, the CAN data bus, which is um, is super important. Um, and we are gonna go vehicle diagnostics into over here. Yeah, that's right. Uh, can bus and we're going to go into the can bus overview and as you can see on screen the upper two uh, signals the yellow and the and the and the uh, blue one are the sample waveforms the bottom two which is uh, wiggling you know they're wiggling all over you know this is the actual scope uh, the channels one and two that's what we have to connect uh, to the uh, so to the um, uh, to the can bus you know uh, basically, we're going to shut it off now because we're not going to really do that. So we're going to go all off, okay, and it shuts off. Now, uh, we're really, this the, the, the particulars of this video is to show you how to analyze the signal itself, okay? Now, uh, this is what you're going to see. This is the CAN bus um, of waveforms, you know. So we have the CAN high and the CAN low. Clearly, this is the can high because it goes from low to high, and you're going to see these are the packets uh, that you see on, on screen. And basically, so this is a this is the can low. Uh, in reality, 
This I'm sorry. This the blue one is a can high, and the and the uh, and the yellow one is a can low. Okay, uh, all these little notches here are the packets. These are ones and zeros. These are binary ones and zeros. Okay, you can never read the packets, so don't even worry about that. You're going to need a can analyzer for that. Uh, this is not. This is beyond the scope of this particular video. Uh, and basically, what you're looking for is this this one here, this line here. And we're going to raise it again. We're inter, you know, superimposing the low, the can low, and the can high. Okay. So basically, let's see if we can plot some uh, some cursors in there. And these are the horizontal cursors that we have. Um, this is this is from the scope itself. Now, basically, this is this is the reason for that. Let me explain to you, you know, why. So this particular line here, okay. That we, we just plot the cursor in, in through it. This particular line, this is a it's like gonna be right around 2.5 volts. Okay? So this is the can high. It goes from 2.5 to about 3.5. The can low, okay, which is that one right there, this is gonna go from 2.5 to around 1.5. Okay, this is a differential signal. This is this is how it's called. Uh, because it, it is there for redundancy. Uh, in case one of them goes down, one of the wires gets shorted, it could still work on the, on the other one. Okay, so only one line. And of course, there is always a termination resistor between can high and low. It's uh, when you have two termination resistors, 120 ohms each, uh, in parallel, which makes it 60 ohms. Okay. Now we have another video that actually goes deep into that, into the actual uh, wiring diagram of the can network. You, you don't really need it. All you got to know, know is that you have one termination resistor usually at the dash and the other one is at usually at the ECM. Not always, but most of the time. Okay. So the dash, if you have a, a termination resistor that's gone and you're having all kinds of uh, CAN network uh, 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 codes, DTC, diagnostic trouble codes, uh, the first thing to look at is the termination resistor at the dash. So you disconnect the dash and you probe across the CAN lines. Uh, on the dash, and you got it. You have to see 120 ohms. If you don't, the termination resistor is shot. Yeah, there's something wrong with it. Okay, so that's one. Now the other one, um, the, so the can low is the same deal. The, the termination resistor goes across from can low to can high. So so pin number six and pin number 14 on the DLC, the diagnostic data link connector. Okay. Now remember, what do you have to see? Um, on the recessive, this is called the recessive v uh, value. Uh, this is 2.5, and the other one is also 2.5. Of course, you know, we have to superimpose them. They, they really have to be on top of the other. Okay? So, 2.5 here, and the other one is going to be, this is going to be 3.5. Okay? And from recessive to the bottom, to the spikes, is 1.5. And basically, this is this is the way can um, this is the way you have to read and analyze the can network it's, it's very simple very not too complicated to do okay all you got to do is set, set this particular scope sets itself up you don't have to do anything with it just probe across pins number 14 okay so uh, remember this is one channel this is channel one and this is channel two so between channel one and ground and between channel two and ground if you probe between the two you're going to see zero because the, these two, they cancel each other, okay? Uh, so that's not really the way to do it. So you have to probe between the, the pin, pin number six, and ground, and pin number 14 and ground. Together, this is what you're gonna see, okay? They're, they're gonna be separate, of course, you know, because you you're reading two channels that are separate. Again, we are superimposing the channels one on top of the other like this. So that way you understand what it is that you're reading. Okay, in reality, this right here is 2.5. This right here is 2.5. Okay, I like to superimpose it so that you understand what we're doing. Okay, and between recessive and the upper edge is 3.5. So 2.5, 3.5, about one volt difference, and the same goes for the other one. 2.5, 1.5. Okay, about one volt difference. And this is really the, the essence of CAN networks. Uh, not all cans are like this, okay? 
but most automotive cans are like like it you know what you're seeing right now and of course you have can a b and c or can high can low low you know low speed can high for high speed so you have a different can networks within a car okay these all these uh, networks you know together uh they are matched together by something called a gateway and i'm sure you've heard about a lot about gateways you know gateways what they do is they they join together on even speed networks okay so can could come in three separate flavors and there's also they, they can 11 bit identify and the 29 bit identifier so again there's a bunch of stuff between you know behind it but the the cycling in other words the signaling is the same okay and basically what you're looking for are these voltage levels okay for the most part 90 percent of the time there are some cans that, are, that operate uh, at a lower 3.3 volts we're not going to go into this right now okay uh, regardless of the uh, of the speed differential you know whether it's can slow or can fast you know uh, it doesn't really matter you know they usually the same okay so recessive which is the this this the 2.5 this is called the recessive level okay and on the upper edge it's recessive the upper edge it's uh 2.5 and then the other one is 3.5 2.5 1.5 very simple very straightforward very easy the, to diagnose you know so anyhow this is the essence of doing uh can network you know uh readouts you know whether you do it with the with the scope that we have on our website autodiagnosticsandpublishing.com or you do it with any other scope or you do it with the we also have the health checker right on our website the health checker it uh, has a scope built into it a single channel scope where you can actually plot uh you you you, you know with one button you can pretty much go through all the uh, the pins pins number one through 16 and a bunch of other uh, tests that it, that it has you know inside the health checker anyhow we'd like to thank you for tuning into our uh, channel adp training where we expose you to all everything to know about uh auto diagnostics this is a hard topic for many people uh, some of you are home mechanics, you work on your own vehicle, some of you are automotive technicians, uh, and you, you know, you really want to know how to crack this, this thing here, because can problems are very, very problematic, and they're always there, always there, you do, especially those U-codes, uh, that's a network code, okay? And it's very simple to go and diagnose this thing, this thing here. Uh, the way to go about it is to uh, press a graph what we're doing right now, uh, graph the signals, if you don't see anything, uh, if you don't have the health checker, uh, you're definitely going to need a scope. So either you get this scope uh, from us or from anybody else, whoever you have a scope, you know, or, uh, or they get the health checker because the health checker stresses and it substitutes. If you don't have the three point, the two point five voltage level that you see here, or the termination resistor, it'll it'll substitute it for you. You can actually inject the voltage with the health checker anyhow so we'd like to thank you for tuning into our channel adp training uh subscribe to our website autodiagnosticsandpublishing.com do a google search on it uh, we really appreciate uh, uh, if you give us a donation okay to our channel here on youtube if you subscribe to it for like five bucks a month we really appreciate it because we need it uh we did this this videos are expensive uh, uh to to produce uh, after I, we do the recording then it goes to a, to a video editor and it goes to a bunch of other people that actually go through the video that's why sometimes it takes us months you know to plan these videos uh, and we are pretty much out of commission you know usually for months at a time uh, and then you see us again you know because we this thing takes a long long time to produce anyhow uh thank you for tuning into our channel and thank you for watching buddy and welcome to another video in today's video we're going to the cannibals and the, the camera low and high capture um, uh, analysis using the eight channel oscilloscope uh, now uh, on screen as you can see we're going to go into the eight channel scope and we're going to go into the vehicle diagnostics can bus diagnostics and the cannabis lh long capture and as you can see right now uh, the lower two signals, the lower two signals are the actual uh, scope channels one and two, and the upper two signals are the samples. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn off the actual uh, scope channels because it's uh, we're using the scope, we're not connected to a car. We're just going to explain the signal analysis. Uh, and in yellow, this is the can high, and in blue, that's the can low. 
Now we're going to superimpose the signals like that, okay? And as you can see, the both signals are a mirror image. This is called a differential signal. The CAN bus is a differential signal. This is a CAN high, okay, or, or the CAN plus, also called the CAN plus, the yellow. And in blue is the CAN low or the CAN minus. Uh, so, you know, this is uh, the reason why the CAN can actually operate. And we, we have a bunch of videos like this, you know, on our website that explain the, the workings of the CAN bus. And basically there, there, there's, uh, there are two uh, parallel uh, resistors, termination resistors connected on the, to the line. Plus pins number 6 and 14, okay, of the DLC connector. That's the actual CAN bus. So between these two guys... You have 160 to 120 ohm, not 160, 120 ohm resistors. Uh, together, because they're in parallel, they make up 60 ohms. Okay. Uh, and again, we are over here. Okay. So this is the res uh, recessive l voltage level. Okay. We're going to go into very quick. We're going to the. Uh, let's see if we can get it. Uh, oops. We made a mistake here. Let's see if we can go into the. Uh, long, I made a mistake. Okay, so we're gonna go into the the cursors. Okay, we're gonna go into the horizontal cursors. And basically, this is what we're looking for. Again, this is the can high. This is the can low. We're gonna superimpose it. This line right here. We've you know we have. A bunch of uh, videos that explain this r right now. So let me let me let's just get the cursors and let's get the the cross is better. There you go. Okay, so this is what we're looking for right now, the cross right here. Okay, so this is the re resistive. This is equals to 2.5 volts. Okay, so again 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5. Little gap here 2.5, 2.5. Okay, these are this is the equals to 2.5. Okay, and 2.5 right here. And right here. Okay. So again, uh the upper level on the can high it, we're looking at 3.5. On the lower level, we're looking at 1.5. Okay. So this right here is 1.5, the lower level, and this is 3.5, the upper level. Now we have this, we have other videos that explain this particular, um, you, you know, analysis of, of the CAN network. But basically what we want to show you also here is the uh, relationship of uh, binary code uh, to the CAN network. This is, a, this is a packet right here. What you're seeing right now, let me show you the whole packet. Okay, this is a packet, the whole deal. Okay, so it goes from here actually to here. This is the whole packet. And this corresponds to a bunch of ones and zeros. So this is one, and the recessive is zero. Well, one, a bunch of zeros, one, a bunch of zeros. So, you know, uh, so basically this is what you're looking for when you are reading uh, uh, the CAN network. You, you, you don't care about the ones and zeros, but yeah, we just, we just want to let you know what they mean, what this particular signal means, okay? And basically what it is is that you are looking for a voltage level. You want to make sure that right here, this is 1.5 and this is 3.5. And also the recessive, which is this right here, okay? The recessive is 2.5, okay? Here you go, 2.5, all right? So, uh, you, you basically you are looking at um, let me see if we could do another cursor that's only horizontal that's it you're looking at it's the same color so uh, but it's right here so you're looking at a recessive of 2.5 it always has to be 2.5 sometimes it goes to 2.6 or 2.5 okay 2.4 uh, but it's always the same okay so basically you're looking at a recessive voltage value that swings up to 3.5 or down to 1.5.
usually there is a one volt difference between recessive and the can high or recessive and the can low okay uh, so basically th this is what you're looking for uh, in order to make sense out of this uh, binary code right here you you would need a can bus analyzer which is a program so it's not a scope okay it is a program that actually detects all these highs and lows and you could punch it you know and basically you can analyze the can uh, network to know which who is communicating uh, this is probably beyond the, the the scope of any automotive technician you don't really care who's communicating you just want to make sure that the modules uh, that are connected are communicating and for that you're going to have to if you really want to know who's not communicating you're going to have to start disconnecting uh, modules and slowly one at a time either disconnect the modules or go into the star connector and basically connect uh, you know restart connecting all the modules uh, separately okay and basically so that's what it is you know that's all there is to it when it comes to uh, uh, you know to to the to the can a uh, network uh, uh, this is a this is this is called the the can bus uh, low and high long capture okay and it is necessary sometimes so that you can identify long stretches of nothing happening so if you see that there's a long stretch of of this right here okay which is the the recessive there's then they're not communicating okay so uh we'd like to thank you for tuning into our channel adp training uh where you uh, we expose you to all kinds of automotive diagnostics at a high level uh make sure that you subscribe and to uh, you uh, to our website and to our youtube channel adp training uh, if you can, uh, we will really appreciate a, 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 uh, uh, a subscription. Uh, so basically, you know, we, these videos are not cheap. So if you can subscribe for a couple of dollars a month, uh, that'll be great. And uh, we appreciate you tuning in and thank you for watching. Welcome to another video. In today's video, we are going to uh, cover uh, the uh, CAN uh signal integrity and uh, uh we're going to do an analysis on it um and how to tell whether the signal uh is proper or not uh, and as you can see on screen uh, we are going into the a channel scope the bus the can bus and we're going into the into the uh, signal integrity uh now this is what you get when the scope sets itself so the upper two signals are sample signals that we're going to analyze those we're going to go uh, use those uh, as the analysis um, and then the bottom two the wiggly the, the those wiggly signals that you see right now uh, these are the um, uh, basically this is channel one and two uh, of the uh, of the oscilloscope now um, we're not connected to a, to a CAN network this time, uh, but basically we're, we're just going to shut it off right now. And we're going to just stay with the, with the sample signals. That's what you're going to use for explanation. Now, as you can see on screen, uh, we have, this is what we have right now. This is the, uh, the CAN high and the CAN low on channels one and two. Okay. Now, this is uh, CAN high. It goes from 2.5 to 3.5 and back to 2.5. So that's the switching, okay? And the same goes for the can low. It goes from 2.5 to 1.5 back to uh, 2.5. Okay, we're going to, if we go to, if we superimpose the channels, okay, this is what you would see. Okay. Let me see. That's it, yeah. So, the recessive this is called the recessive signal okay uh, and the recessive signal is pretty much 2.5 always on can uh, whether it's can fast or can uh, depend depending on the can uh, but 90 percent of the time that's what you're going to see especially what you what you get when you communicate with the scanner uh, with the um, uh, the onboard diagnostic scanner okay now <clears throat> now so uh what do you get i mean wh what do you care okay so let's go let's go into the into the cursors right now uh, we're going to go see if we go into the right we're going to go into the cross 
So this is this is what you get. Number one, this right here. Okay, right. So that make sure that you get uh, one point five. Okay, uh, and that's how you do the signal analysis. This 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 um, oscillations here, they tend to be normal. Okay, you know you don't want them to get too you know too grave. You know on on the on the on the waveform uh, because that's that's not right. That's not good. Okay. Uh, the, remember, this is the zero line right here. Okay, that's a zero line for channel one. That's a zero line for channel two. Okay, now this right here and this is equal to one uh, one point five volts. So two point five. Okay, one point five. It's about a volt difference, you know, between high and low uh, for the can low, and the same deal for the can high. Okay, so. Uh, you want to see this okay at one volt so one 2.5 1.5 i'm sorry 1.5 so you want to see 1.5 right here between between uh, uh the bottom side of the can low and the ground line okay this is the the yellow signal is the ground line okay the same goes for okay okay for the can high okay so between can high right here on the bottom side and on the on the, on the i'm sorry this this is the zero line for the blue uh for the blue channel okay what well, is this is in this case is the, the channel two so anyhow you want to see this is a 3.5 okay so that you want to see 3.5 on the upper edge okay of the canned high so 1.5 on the candle and, and this is how you you can determine right away if you have issues with the excessive resistance in the line uh, because you have um, uh, wires that are corroded or what have you okay or, or whatever whatever you know it doesn't really matter okay from this signal right now you can pretty much tell a lot okay you tell a lot and and basically you how do you uh, acquire the signal? You can acquire the signal by going from pin number six on the data link connector, the OBD2 connector, the, the DLC connector, okay? Pin number six and ground, okay? On channel one, the yellow one, okay? This one here, and pin number 14 and ground or channel two, okay? And this is basically, you. Do, what we're doing right now is we're doing a deep, signal analysis we want to make sure that this right here okay this right here okay it's 2.5 we're looking for that precisely and we don't want to see any deviations from that this this, this signal is perfect well, let me bring this down okay and so and you we want to see this one here at 1.5 on the can low this is the can low remember and on the can high we want to see the same this segment right here we want to see 2.5 again Okay, and 3.5 on the uh, the actual uh, bit. This is actually a bit, you know, of of, uh, uh, of uh, information for the data. This is this is how, uh, depending on the high, the amount of uh, this is a, a one is will be a one, a zero on the 2.5 will be a zero. So one zero. So if it toggles like that, open up and down like that, that's that's how that's how the the the, the, the signal. That's how uh, computers uh, communicate with each other. Okay. So it's um, it's a digital communication. And this is scan. Okay. So uh, so basically, it, this is a very simple you know explanation you know on how to tell whether you have a proper switch switching uh, signals can high and can low. Again, pin number five. I mean, I'm sorry, pin number six and pin number fourteen. Okay. Between these two pins, okay, you're supposed to have a resistor. Okay. Uh, two resistors in parallel. Of 120 ohms each okay both of them make 60 ohms okay uh, so pretty much you know uh, you can actually if you have a multimeter would, would actually de de determine if you have a hundred it'll it'll read 60 ohms uh, if both resistors are in place if you have one resistor that is out it, it's going to read 120 ohms it'll work with 120 ohms but that you don't want that because that's uh, that creates problems. Okay, so uh, so you want to see 60 ohms between pins number six and 14. Okay, uh, and again we're going to repeat ourselves. The recessive 
on both channels is 2.5, okay? The recessive, which is, with no communication happening, this is what you're gonna see, 2.5. If you measure with a, with an ohmmeter, I mean, I'm not with an ohmmeter, with a voltmeter between the, the pins number six and 14, you're gonna see zero, because they both cancel each other, okay? That, that's the actual idea behind it, okay? Uh, basically, what, uh, uh, what is, you have two lines uh, for redundancy. In case one goes down, you still have the other one and you still get communication, you still have communication between the modules and of course between the test equipment, the scanner and the computers, okay? Uh, so um, again, so you're looking for 2.5, this is the recessive, and you're looking for 3.5 on the can high and 1.5 on the candle, okay? And that's pretty much it. Uh, we have a, a unit on our website, Auto Diagnostics and Publishing, that actually tests the he OBD2 health checker, uh, that actually tests all these things, you know? Uh, and pretty much a, um, it goes a long way because it has a built-in uh, scoped also, so you can actually test. It injects power voltage, uh, and so it injects uh, the, 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 the resistor, the 120 ohm resistor, it, it also puts that in substitution, you know? And uh, and that's pretty much it. You know, we like we like to thank you for tuning into our channel ADP Training uh, here on YouTube. Okay, uh, subscribe to our channel here. Subscribe to our website. Uh, we give out free stuff every month. Okay, um, whether it's a you know a, a ebook or a sometimes even software and this and that. So uh, I mean, we uh, we do a lot for our community. You know, for our customers and all that. All right, so uh, if you can uh, uh, subscribe to this YouTube channel for a couple of bucks a month, you know, five bucks a month, two bucks a month, ten bucks a month, whatever you can afford. Uh, if you think this is a useful channel for you, you know, we want to keep making videos, and this is very expensive for us to do. So uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel as well, okay? So we appreciate you for uh, you guys for tuning into our channel, and thank you for watching. This channel is for do-it-yourselfers, as well as professional auto repair technicians. We present all the content using the latest CG animation techniques, on-hands video, and how-to, tips and techniques. We encourage you to subscribe to this channel now. Once subscribed, anytime we upload a new automotive tip, secret, or technology video, you will be notified. Finally, by subscribing, you will also be part of our weekly freebies. Yes, we're constantly giving away lots of free merchandise. Automotive Diagnostics and Publishing's Mandy Concepcion, the owner of this channel, is one of the most prolific auto technology authors on the web. At any moment in time, we may offer a free book, Kindle eBook, Android app, one of our own diagnostic equipment, or even auto repair software that runs on your PC. Subscribe now free of charge, learn lots of automotive technology secrets, and win free stuff. It doesn't get any better than that. Thanks for watching, and enjoy.